Indiana 33, Western Kentucky 30. And, of course, this one went to overtime. Props to the guy in the Bet U.S. College Football Show chat that told us that he actually had Western Kentucky favored in this game. And he said, am I crazy for that? And I said, uh, I said yes, you're crazy because Indiana significantly more talented and the numbers certainly show thus far that Indiana is better. Um, because you have to schedule, or you have to base it on the schedule, like opponent adjusted, right? You can't just look at what Western Kentucky did against Austin P and Hawaii. Apparently, we were wrong on that, and that's that's why you get all these data points early in the season so that you can get the actual numbers to figure out what in the world these teams are. Because nobody knows what Michigan really is right now, right? Nobody knows exactly what Indiana is because honestly. If it wasn't for the turnovers and all the mistakes, Illinois probably should have won that ball game. Like post game win expectancy for Illinois against Indiana was massive, right? Western Kentucky in this one. Go ahead and pop it up on the screen here. Post game win expectancy 82% for Western Kentucky, and yet they lose it in overtime 33 to 30. Just nuts. Humphrey says, Did I miss the Florida breakdown? Poor USF fans. That was some bull. Uh, I. I am not going to do a full breakdown on that one because I need to go back and fully watch it. Like, I need to see exactly what happened. I do know that Anthony Richardson was not great, and it appears that Florida maybe didn't show up. Um, This was a a sandwich spot for them, and it was a beautiful spot for USF, right, to take advantage of an in-state opponent, et cetera. So, uh, 82 Atlantic, what's your early feel on Georgia State and Coastal? Oh, wait, let me finish finish Indiana first. (laughs) Let Let me dive in this one. So, uh, when you look at the stats here, uh, the drive chart, just it just nuts to look at it, right? Uh, Western Kentucky is doing all kinds of fun things as far as the box score goes. Uh, Reed, 33 out of 43, 329 with two touchdowns and one pick. And then, of course, he ran the ball 10 times for 18 yards. Uh, Robichaud, 14 carries for 135 yards. Western Kentucky's offense is surprisingly good considering all the pieces that they lost last year. And they've got a 26-year-old, I believe, offensive coordinator, really young dude that worked under Zach Kitley uh, as a quality control guy last year. I believe he was like assistant quarterback coach last season. And they hired him as the OC. Said, you know what? We trust you. Go out and get this thing done. But, man, uh, the way that Indiana was able to win this game, late, uh, third quarter into the fourth quarter, touchdown, Punt, field goal, touchdown, field goal. Like, that's that's how they were able to get this thing done. Just insane. Just absolutely insane. Cheers to Indiana for getting it done. Uh, I, I talked about the Western Kentucky stats, but let's talk about Connor Bazelag here. 33 out of 55, 364, two touchdowns. Um, Sean Shivers it, it just felt like he could not get going in this game. 15 attempts, 58 yards. Uh, DJ Matthews, like, five receptions, 41 yards. Like that's, I didn't expect that. I thought that he was going to be able to get way too much here um, or way more in this spot. And yet, it is what it is. Like So Indiana gets the dub. Uh, they are now 2-0 and on the season, or 3-0 and on the season. Didn't look great against Idaho, but regardless, uh, Indiana, 3-0. and You got more, more win than you did last year. But I, I tossed them in there with Kansas and Kentucky and uh, whoever else, right? Duke. All, all of them are 3-0 right now. Just insane. Just insane. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.